Rob. Welcome to Axel's Garage. Out here with Jeff again, the 2005 Avalanche that we've been making a lot of videos on because we've got to get it ready for Steve-O when he goes back to school. And what we've been experiencing is a fail to prime or uh, the prime circuit works, but uh, it failed to maintain that prime. So what will happen is park the vehicle overnight and go to start it, it doesn't want to start, cycle the key a couple times, let that pump prime, and then it'll start right up. And if you shut it down and go back to it a half hour, an hour, an hour and a half even later, the thing starts right up. It's when it sits for a while, it loses its prime. Usually that could be caused by <clears throat> a number of things. Injectors slowly leaking down, could be, but usually you'll get a rich code with that or um, some kind of rich running condition, which it doesn't have. The fuel pressure regulator sometimes leaks and causes that in this particular vehicle if you look on the fuel rails there is no fuel pressure regulator now sometime in 2004 2005 some vehicles had a fuel pressure regulator on the rails some don't if you look up in parts catalogs they'll list one on the rail for this vehicle but there ain't one there where it is is actually part of the pump housing assembly so what we did was we said you know what <clears throat> this truck has got 240,000 miles on it Although we've had the engine out and replaced a lot of stuff and got it running in pretty tip-top condition, we have no idea underneath what was done in the history of the vehicle. So we're going to put a new pump in, a whole assembly, which comes with the fuel pressure regulator. This way, at least we know where we're starting from. We chose a Delphi pump. Now, the internet says, forums and mechanics say, use a Delphi, use a GM OEM, or use an AC Delco. I'm not really crazy. I've used the AC Delcos and I've had mixed results with them. Delphi have better results and GM OEMs, real good results. The problem is GM OEM pump is like $350 for this thing. The Delphi is about $200, so we opted for the Delphi. Ordered it, came in, got a uh, locking ring also because we don't know whether we're going to pull this tank down and that locking ring is going to be a rusty disaster. Who knows? But we're gonna go switch over to the GoPro, crawl underneath, and start getting things disassembled and see what happens. All right, well, up and under here, we have our fuel filler neck. Two clamps on that. I don't know which end it'll be easier, probably easier to get it off on the tank end. And then I got what appears to be some, some EVAP vent style stuff hopefully we can get these fittings plastic fittings apart and they're not too brittle all right let's see if we get these lines looks like i'm going to need two hands a little squeeze action should get them and they're in a little clip and i can unclip them from the tank also which might be an added bonus all right so that's unclipped from the tank and there's some clips on the side behind the heat shield so I gotta come in from this side and the brake hose is zip tied to the fuel filler that's factory all right let me dig in here and get as much of this stuff up here disconnected as I can so under I got a floor jack and a board and there's two straps, they got 15 millimeter bolts on them. Wow, those are rusty. Let me get some spray on that. I'm gonna put some lube on it and I'm gonna drive it back up again. And I'm going to do it again because I don't want shit to break. Best 
option right now is just to let it down a little bit and see what happens. Alright, so the tank is actually up on its own. It's hooked in the front on the front cross member and it's back over here. So I'm going to go just give it a little squirt. There is a little fuel left in it. So I got both straps off. You can see over there hanging down. I got the board in the middle, the floor jack supporting it, and now I need to see in the back here if I have a little more access to get stuff off. Okay, so the key here is to get it off the top, not off the tank. It's almost impossible to get it off the tank. I got the jack on the front of the tank, keeping the front of the tank up, which dropped the back of the tank down. Now I gotta get that fitting off over there, put you there. And I'm reaching in with one arm. I don't know how this fitting is supposed to come apart. Don't remember. That slides in there. I squeeze and pull, pull and squeeze. I can't see with my bifocals. Oh. All right, so there's a little black tab on either side. There's probably a tool for this. I don't know how the hell you'd get a tool for this in there. All right. So now, um, these things are going to want to come down with the tank. Let's see, this is the same kind of fitting. Let's see if I can get this one off also. So, that one came off, but these are connected to the crank, these like EVAP lines. So I need to get it off up there so let's see if I can put you over here okay all right there's little clippy dickies oh I'll show you once we get everything out I'll show you the little clippy dickies now the top one looks to be a little different Holy cow, I can't see anymore. You know, the progressives, which are like bifocals, but when you're looking up, got it. Oh, it's just like the freaking heater hoses. Got one of those clippy dickies on it. Just like the heater hoses. Holy cow. I don't know. Can you see that? I hope so. Hope you can see that. Just like the heater hoses up front. All right. So that top one has got one of those. See the blue sleeve? All right. Just like on the heater hoses up front. Real pain in the ass, you gotta depress the blue tab on either side and pull it off. Bottom one's got two little clippy dickies, that's not too bad. And then this one right here has two little like clips on either side of it. That's this one here I'm trying to show you. Oh, where am I? Right there, that one there. And then you get all those hard plastic lines off. Holy shit, what a pain in the ass. All right, now that the back of the tank, everything is disconnected. I'm going to go and try to see if I can wiggle it down now. Now, if you remember, the front is sort of held in by the, the cross member. All right, and the back, the neck is resting on the rear axle. Okay, so I can at least try to slide my 
wood back into place. If I bring the back of the tank up just a little so the fuel neck cl clears the rear axle and shimmy to the rear. You know what? I know. I gotta get that where I disconnected the fill. That's what it is. I disconnected it from the the part coming from the filler neck. I gotta get this whole hose off. Come on. Okay. Now, I'm going to stuff my rag in the end of the tank because all the crusty, rusty bits of this truck like to fall down. And I don't want them to fall into the tank. Now, the back of this tank should come down Clear the axle, and then I can slide it in the front. Should have watched a YouTube video. I don't remember having this much trouble years ago. I think it was I was younger. Of the tank, oh, jacks down all the way, and I should be able to get at my wire connection and my fuel line connections. And I'll move the camera for you so you guys can see what I'm seeing. All right, so on top of the tank, yeah, you can see it's crusty and dirty, and and I'm gonna take some brake clean. Just so I can see over there. All right, so I got two electrical connections. Whoop! Hold on. There's number one. Number two is, of course, got some kind of locking tab on it. Just slide that back. Hopefully I can press the button. Oh, I got my head like, you probably got a better view than I do. Okay, there we go. So there's my electrical wires. I can get them out of the way. All right, look at the condition of that. That could be why I was losing prime too. All right, so more of these little clippy dickies, which, like I said, they were they're like the heater hoses, where you pinch them and release them. I think there's a tool in, in the uh, in the service kit that's supposed to help with this. Um, I don't ever remember using it before, but I do remember um, I have gotten this apart without any kind of tool, but these are pretty crusty. All right, so green is on the right, blue is on the left. It's the fatter one on the left, the thinner one on the right, just in case I gotta refer back. Um, you can see how rotted the top of this is. This one's just moving up with rust just here is just insane. 
I'm just trying to dig out any flaky, flaky rust. You know, you can try the, the service kit, which has got these things in it, which is supposed to get you in there. I don't think any of that's going to work. Uh, I'm just going to break this one off. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this one-handed. How many of two hands there? Let's pop that clip up. All right, well, I was fighting with these lines. GoPro battery went dead. I broke both of them off the top of the fuel pump because there was no way we were getting them off. So I worked on one. I got it. I still got another one to do, but I think that is the vent that's actually connected to the tank, so we'll slide that out. But I used one of these doohickeys in a fuel pump, uh, fuel line, or well, quick disconnect set. I'll I'll show you when we get up, but um, I'll link it in the description below. Anyway, so it's supposed to be, if, if you have enough, like uh, up top where we had that blue fitting, if you remember, we, didn't, we couldn't get any kind of tool in there, so I used a little pick to get it in there but this goes in and when you slide it in it expands this blue plastic which is supposed to then you're supposed to be able to just pull the line out problem is they get rusted in there so what I've been doing is going back between seafoam deep creep free all PB blaster holding the line because you can't twist this hard plastic line holding it with a pair of channel locks and grabbing a tip with vice grips and just spinning and spinning and spinning back and forth while while the tool was in there so this is what it looked like so I had the tool all the way in it's not gonna go all the way in now because the fittings not all the way in and I'm just spinning and spraying and spinning and spraying and spinning and spraying until it just finally came out like this so you can see this little nub is what those blue fingers ride on and it was just rusted so it spun but it was rusted in place it just wouldn't come out and there's tons of scourge in there so I am going to try to use some penetrating oil to get it to come out because I don't really want it to go in all right so here's the um, I guess it's to return that must go through like the evap system but it stays uh, in with the tank and goes up into the other, other thing so I got the, the doohickey the biggest one you could fit that goes in there is the one that pops up these these green ones so we got that in there the channel locks were the tongue and groove flyers right are just to hold it hold the line in place like that and then I'm going to cinch down the vice grips like that and again some spray some spray and this is pretty much what I did for like 15 20 minutes and you can see if sometimes that the white thing will work its way out and you got to keep sending it back in and then I'll alternate to some deep creep They do call them quick connect fittings, not necessarily disconnect apparently. There it goes. Holy cow. My hands, like the muscles hurt from holding that for so long. Alright. 
that's what we were chasing after. Once it starts going, it starts going. I'm just trying to keep stuff out. There's our ring. And before we pull this pump up and out, I want to try to get as much of the scourge out as possible so it doesn't go in the tank Alright, so the, pump, the new pump ships with the float disconnected. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to take the O-ring, slide it underneath, and I'm going to just leave it hanging like that. I'm going to take the, the float and it snaps in. Right here, and it's, it's tough to get it in. There we go. So that float snaps in and hangs. The O ring is going to come like this. All right, um, what I like to do clean my opening nice, but what I like to do is put some white grease in my opening. Pump goes in this way. This is how it's oriented with the lines going forward. So what I'm going to do to make insulation a little easier is give a little coat of white grease where the o-ring is going to sit so that when we turn it and it's rubbing on that o-ring it can slide and the o-ring won't bind it or potentially tear the o-ring and hopefully this will um, and I'm putting a little extra on the outside on the fingers and that's just to keep future rust at bay. You saw what it looked like when we pulled it out. Now the only line that has to be hooked up to the pump is the one we took off. I don't know if we were on camera when we took that off. The camera was off. So it was the same thing. So this was up on the pump. I took one of the adapters that fit, slid it down. And once you slide it down in, it pulled right off. No problem. That actually worked really well. So now what we need to do is plug this one back in so we're just going to slide it right over and it clicks right in and now when we go to put it in just watch out for the float oh, hang on we screwed up now the o-ring is on the wrong side so where's that white one that I have you see it somewhere so the o-ring has got to go above so that's it 
now. I can float in. rings are facing oh rings if you want to face it forward the little flag is in the groove where it's supposed to be all right now I'm gonna wind these up the pump does have like a spring-loaded thing in it so you got to push down like that and once you push it and turn it just a little bit in there a little and now we can and you'll see when it bottoms out on slots that looks good so now this this guy here right this guy here came in right here so we could hook this one up when it's nice and clean out here and you could see it's a quick connect it wasn't a quick disconnect so <laughs> maybe it's not a quick connect either. Get in there. Looks like it doesn't want to go in. It's not quick connected at all. It's not quick connected like it should. I got a fix for that and I'll show you that in a little bit. Now I'm hoping that the pressure side quick connects the way it should. That would be bad if it didn't. I guess the springiness of these clips are not springing. So we're on, we're in there. We're in the O-ring. But the green thing isn't really grabbing the 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 ridge in the in the pipe. So if I take this zip tie Put it through like this right and get it tight now you can't pull it out it's pushing the the green so I like that I'm gonna go with that see now it won't come out all right so now we can slide the tank under and uh, lift it up into position so back underneath with the help of my son his truck after all and a board uh, we got the tank back in so we had to uh, shimmy it up onto that front cross member then connect that one fuel line in the wire harness and then we could uh, sort of bring it up leave the back hanging just a little bit get the front up put the front strap in and then in the back while the back's hanging just a little bit make all of our connections in the back you know, all those evap lines and whatnot we got them back in and the fill neck I got to make sure that that's in good and then I can tighten the clamps on the fill neck I 
did put a little white grease to help this hose slide over. Hose is pretty hard and brittle. Gotta put the last strap on. So I'll come in, slide the hook end up in there. Then I'll get my bolt. I'll lube it up a little bit and I'll drive it home and hopefully we should be good. What I have now is I'll give everything the last once over. Make sure I got all my evap lines plugged in. All right, everything looks good under here. gas because he's reading a little low let's see what he's reading now we did run it down pretty low so he's reading about an eighth of a tank which is where we were when we parked it so I'm really not worried about that so I had Emily go and get two and a half gallons a little can. So that's two and a half gallons. I'll take a look now and see what the gauge reads. That brought me from an eighth to um, just over a quarter. Should be about right. Now let me just take a, a quick gander with a light and I'll make sure that I don't see anything dripping in the fill line or any any other place for that matter. I don't see any drips or anything in my fill line. I think I'm okay there. Um, everything looks good. Start. really wasn't a hard job it was labor intensive it um, it just really sucks that those lines were so rusted it, it's a lot of work to take the tank out get it back in especially by yourself another set of hands make the job a little bit easier um, the rest of the lines is gee I don't know do the best you can I guess jobs done no leaks appears to be starting good we won't really know until the morning to see whether really that was our problem. Either way, I'm more comfortable with him having a new pump in there. And we'll see. I'll link everything we used in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.